Wander Wealthy Podcast, Episode 87. Oh, hello. Welcome to the Wander Wealthy Podcast. If you're new, my name is Tess Wicks. I'm the host. If you're not new, welcome back. Lovely to have you. Can you hear my Woodwick candle burning in the background? It's one of my most recent favorite buys. I love Woodwick candles and I decided to splurge because they are a little bit of a splurge, but it just creates a wonderful ambiance. Anyway, today is a solo show and I really wanted to focus today on speaking about planning for 2019, specifically money planning, although I think you can use this approach and these techniques I'm going to share with you to plan for basically anything. But a lot of our goals do have financial components. So if you're trying to map out some plans for goals in the new year, then this will be perfect for you, especially if you do have a money tie with it. Before I dive in to the money planning session, I just wanted to give a little update. First of all, thank you so much to everyone who messaged me and gave me such great feedback and kind words of advice and words of uh, resignation, like that my words resonated with you, not like resignation as in resigning. Sorry, that was the wrong word to use. But everyone, I just heard from so many people who had listened to my podcast a few shows ago. I think it was episode 84 where I shared about my personal struggles living in Italy and kind of making the mistake of aligning my happiness with some of my goals and how I was disconnecting myself from that and really finding happiness in the process because life is so much more full of the process of getting to goals than achieving goals. And so why do we delay our happiness until we achieve them? I don't know. Anyway, that episode inspired me to create a video. So if you want to get kind of a more succinct and action-packed lesson on separating your goals from your happiness or your happiness from your goals and really finding joy in the process, then you can check out my YouTube channel. It is a video called How to Be Happy. So you can find it on YouTube. Go to youtube.com slash wanderwealthy by Tess Wicks or I post everything that I share in the internet world in the private Facebook community, Wealthy Wanderers. And if you're not in the community, it's a great place to have conversations about money, talk about episodes that you've been listening to, other share other podcasts that you're loving blog posts, talk about strategies that you're doing, or even just share your goals so you can have kind of a a curated group of people that you hold yourself accountable to. And it doesn't necessarily have to be like your parents or your great aunt who is commenting on every single one of your posts or anything else like your friends from high school that you don't necessarily keep in touch with. Um, It's a group that is, they're all you know, going after similar goals as you and it's the Wealthy Wanderers. So you can get in there by going to wanderwealthy.com slash FB. You can get on my email list as well if you go to that link and just stay in touch with everything that's going on with Wander Wealthy and the community. So without further ado, let's get into our money planning session for 2019. So I have five steps that I'm going to be outlining and then From step number five, we're going to go into my seven-step game plan for how I tackle with massive action a specific goal that I might be setting out to achieve. I also have a goal-setting strategy that I've adopted from actually a CrossFit coach named Ben Bergeron, and he shares how he tackles goals by using whoopee goal-setting instead of smart goal-setting. So whoopee is W-H-O-O-P-I-E. And it's just a more specific way of setting and planning and then tackling your goals than what I think SMART goal setting does, which is S-M-A-R-T. So SMART is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. And Whoopi is wishing and hoping, outcome, obstacles, planning and process, identity, and execution. So they kind of cover similar things, but I think Whoopi is a lot more specific and it covers things that you don't plan for when you set SMART goals, which are things like those obstacles or excuses that always come up or we always make. And that's usually the big reason why we don't end up 
achieving our goals is because we give up when those obstacles peep their heads into our lives and the identity piece which I think is really important to start visualizing yourself having already achieved the goals and identifying as a person that already does the things you want to do rather than you know, just having a goal that you're working towards. So if we have time, I'll get into a little bit more of the whoopee goal setting methodology as well after sharing the seven step game plan. Um, this is also something I dive deep into in the money program before we even set out talking about money, building a budget, creating your cash flow system, investing, understanding your accounts. We really dive into mindset and goal setting and it's just really important to understand what you're pursuing before learning all this information and not being prepared to pursue that and being prepared to get met with objections and obstacles that you're going to see inevitably in your life. So let's get into my five steps for preparing your money plan for 2019. We'll go through the seven step game plan and then if we have time we'll touch on the whoopee goal setting methodology as well can you guys tell that I'm kind of a goal setting junkie all right so if you're in the car then listen to this again when you're at home sitting down with a notepad if you're sitting down with a notepad good on you I think the best thing you can do is like listen to this episode and pause it so that you can take notes So step number one in money planning for 2019, especially after this crazy time of year, the holiday season where we end up spending like all of our money, is to face the damage. Even if you didn't spend a ton of money over the holiday season, face the damage or the reality of what 2018 has created for you. If you haven't checked your finances, you haven't calculated your net worth, you haven't looked at what your bank or credit card statements are saying, especially if you haven't done that in the last three months, this is going to be a key thing. You need to be aware of what's happening in your financial life before you can take any practical and actionable steps to improving your financial situation. And this is the hardest part. I totally understand if you are all of a sudden get like a knot in your stomach even thinking about opening up your bank account or your credit card statement or looking at even like a mint.com or personal capital to see the reality of what's been going on, especially when it comes to your spending over the holidays. But it is so important. So if you can get over that like not inducing hump and just do it and face the damage that's going to be the biggest and most important thing to do and you'll be well on your way to now creating a game plan that's going to work with you and for you while you go into the new year. The second thing I want you to do is actually kind of unrelated. I mean you can use the information that you now know by facing the damage to start doing this next step but you don't necessarily have to although I do think you should do these steps in sequence. The second thing is to, this is where your notepad comes into play, pull up a notepad and just blank piece of paper. You might need front and back. Start making a list. And this is what I like to call my lifetime goals list. I want you to list out everything you want to accomplish in your life, at least as of today. This list is bound to change. And that's the hard thing about finance is your life is going to change and there's nothing you can do about it. Like, Things are going to happen, emergencies are going to come up, unexpected people are going to come into your life, and you're going to create new goals that are going to cost you new amounts of money or emergencies are going to happen that are going to cost you an amount of money. So your financial picture is always going to be changing, which is why it's really important that we regularly check in on our finances and check in on these goals. But there is no better time than the present to get started setting those goals. So if you've already made a list like this before, try to find it in your piles of saved sheets of paper or saved notebooks. Otherwise, just start from scratch and start building out a lifetime achievement list. Really start envisioning what you want your life to look like. You know, if you're sitting here and you're like, well, I'm single and I hope to someday get married and have some kids and you know, with my partner, maybe buy a home. That is something you should definitely write down. But if you're not really clear on really what you want, like you don't know if you want kids or you don't know if you want a partner, just go with what feels right and certain right now. You know, do your best to figure it out right now 
but know and have that empathy with yourself that your life is going to change and that's okay too. Just do what you envision now. So Maybe you want to get married in a couple years and the wedding, you would set a budget of X, Y, or Z. You know, figure out what that monetary equivalent is going to be for these goals. Because a lot of our goals have money related things. Like there's going to be a cost that is involved in order to be able to achieve this goal. Maybe you want to start your own business or go off on your own or even just start a side hustle. Although... In a lot of ways, those can be very cost efficient and low cost. There still is going to be a cost that comes with it. If you want to go off on your own, you're probably going to have to build an extra padding onto your emergency savings fund. Maybe you don't even have an emergency savings fund. Let's set an emergency savings fund goal. If you want to get out of debt, that is a goal. What is the monetary value of you paying off all of your debt? How much is that going to cost you? What is the balance on your debt? If you want to buy a home, what kind of home value are you looking for? And what's going to be the down payment that you want to shoot for? Are you aiming for 20% or only a 3% FHA loan? If you want to buy a car in cash or even just put a significant amount of money down so you don't have to take up as much of a car loan. If you want to retire by the age of 65 or you want to retire by the age of 30, what is that going to take? If you want to send your kids to college and not have them have to worry about paying for it, what is that going to take? If you want to have kids in the first place, maybe you don't get paid maternity leave. How much would you like to be able to have saved up for maternity leave in order that it doesn't stretch you and your partner, or even if you do it on your own, it doesn't stretch you too thin. So these are all examples, but literally just sit down and start thinking. You know, it can even be material possessions. I want to buy a new couch this year. I want to buy a new designer bag every year but starting in three years from now when I know I'll have that extra income maybe it's that you want to negotiate a higher salary it doesn't even just have to be purchasing goals or debt payoff goals it can also be money income generating goals but you need to make this big exhaustive list just get everything in your mind down on paper and the reason we do this is because of the W and the H from the whoopee. So we're starting to get into the whoopee a little bit. I'm going to share some of these little nuggets with you. But wishing and hoping is the W and the H from whoopee. And it's said that when you actually write something down, you are 42% more likely to achieve it just by getting it down on paper. So I, this is why I want you to make this big exhaustive list because at least you're getting it out of your head and you're getting it down on paper and there's some form of permanence in that even though it doesn't feel like permanence at all. It really just feels like you're wishing and hoping something into existence which is partially true because you are more likely to achieve it if you get it down on paper. Okay, so you make that lifetime goals list and I do want you to connect the dollar amount that it's going to cost or that you would like to bring in or that you want to pay off with that goal to the best of your knowledge. You know, get it as accurate as you can conjure up right now. If you have the numbers in front of you, you can obviously pull that up. If you know what the average cost of a wedding is, you can, you know, put that down if you want to go average. Or if you have an idea of what you would budget for a wedding, you can also put that down. But just kind of general numbers doesn't have to be exact. So once you've made that list, we move on to step number three, which is to prioritize that list. And if that list has 100 things on it, you're going to prioritize it from one being most important to 100 being least important. And this can get tricky because our goals are not only priority-based, they're also time-based. So although you might have some pressing goals right now, like I want to buy a sofa this year and I want to get married next year and I want to buy able to afford a car by paying it for cash entirely in three years. You also want to retire, which feels like forever out, but that might be your highest priority. So you really got to kind of finagle and go, okay, what would I be willing to forego in the short term in order to make sure that I can retire in the long term or in order to make sure that I can buy the house in seven years and really kind of figure out what is important to you and this is something again we do in the money program where I really make sure that 
the students align their priorities with their core values, their money priorities with their core values. And then this gets into the goals of really just figuring out what is important to me, not only from a time basis, but also from my core values of who I really am. Am I a person that makes sure that my future is taken care of before I indulge in some of the more minute material things? Or do I have high priority on my appearance because I get paid for you know, how I look like, maybe you're an influencer or you're trying to become an influencer and that would take priority over maybe saving for a home or maybe you really want to be a homeowner but you love to travel. But being a homeowner is more pressing for you right now than traveling. Even though you know you're probably not going to buy a home for three or four years and you want to travel every year, maybe you choose to travel a little less because you have really aligned your priorities and your core values when it comes to your money and what you want your money to be working for you to do. Do you want it to be working in a savings account or do you want it to be working on paying off your credit card every single month in full when it comes due because you do want to spend on travel or on other consumer goods and that's okay it doesn't matter you just have to know what is the most important so when it comes to your lifetime goals list you got to do this too it's not always just day-to-day spending and what you're spending your money on and how that aligns with your core values and your personal priorities but also the goals that you want to achieve throughout your life and this can be tricky but it's not like a tricky gut-wrenching tricky it's just okay now I know I have a lot of goals What are the ones that I definitely are, you know, they're not negotiable. I need to achieve them to feel like I am really putting my money to work for me as a person. And if you do have a partner, I definitely recommend you sit down with your partner and you do this exercise together. I probably should have mentioned that in the beginning, but here I am. Go grab your partner now and come back to this. So make that prioritized list and number it one to infinity, however many goals you have. If you only have 10, it's a little bit easier for you. But I really want you to make sure you're prioritizing that list so you can focus on, and let's get into step number four, picking one, maybe two things from that list that you're really going to focus on in the first quarter of 2019. Now, again, we're going back to the money program because a lot of this stuff I teach in the money program. And a big one is to focus on your goals, even if they're going to take years to accomplish. So it might be like a 35 year goal. I want you to laser in focus on what you can accomplish for that goal in just the next three months. The reason is it's really hard for our brains to see out past 90 days from now. So I really like to set goals in 90 day increments. And just break them down. So if you have, you know, you want, let's say, to make $4,000 in side hustle money at the end of the year, well, that means you can break it up. So at the end of the year, that's at the end of four quarters, four periods of 90-day increments. So that just means that you have to make $1,000 at the end of three months. Now, obviously, you can shoot for a little lower and assume you would pick up steam, but let's just make it easy on ourselves when we're goal setting. Or if you're trying to pay off $4,000 of debt at the end of the year, by the end of the year of 2019, then obviously you would pay off $1,000 by the end of three months. This makes it so that we can first see that goal as achievable. Now we're going to the smart (laughs) settings of goals. See it as achievable. Know that you can do it and it helps you build momentum. So again, find the first two or even just one goal that you have prioritized on your list. And now we're going to go into the making of a game plan. But first you have to pick those one or two. And I really want you to focus in on just picking one or two goals because This is so important. We don't want to spread our focus too thin. We don't want to try to do everything at once. Obviously, there are some goals you can put on autopilot. If paying off your debt isn't your first or second priority goal, you can obviously still make your minimum required debt payments. If investing for retirement isn't your first one or two goal, 
You can still make sure that you're investing in your employer-sponsored retirement plan, like a 401k, and at least invest up to the percentage where you're going to get the matching contribution from your employer, because otherwise you're just leaving free money on the table. Or you can even invest a little more as long as you know that you have some money or some time left over once you look at net pay and net time in your week. You know, I'm talking about both money to save or pay off debt or time to make sure that you can make time to make extra money if a side hustle is one of your goals or something like that. So you want to make sure that you have this stuff left over so that you can put that towards these one or two, number one or two prioritized goals. I hope that makes sense. Set some goals on autopilot, especially if they're further down your list, but there's some easy things you can do now to at least make sure you're covering your basics and then make sure that you laser focus in on goal number one and goal number two that you have prioritized on your list. And then all you have to do is break it down into what are you going to be able to achieve in the next three months. And I did a Facebook Live in, I believe it was the Money Program slash the Invested Program's private Facebook community about setting good, better, best goals. I don't think we're going to go into that. We also talk about this in the money program. I'm not going to go into that too much. Obviously, you can set like three different levels of goals to at least build again the momentum, but I think just breaking down your goals into three-month increments is good enough to help you get an achievable goal. And then once you do achieve that at the end of the three months or even before the three months is ended, you can set a new 90-day goal and help you build that momentum to get you to achieving your goals. I mean, this is how goal setting works. A lot of times when we connect it with our brain is making sure that we are having some momentum and seeing some progress being made because otherwise, especially when you're trying to tackle you know, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars of student loan debt or a mortgage, or you're trying to build that one hundred thousand dollar business, it can feel so unachievable when it's such a high value number and you're not seeing that progress. So you really got to break it down so that you can see these small bits of momentum and your brain can get those doses of dopamine to continue moving forward. Cause goals and achieving them, it's hard work. It's going to be hard work. And we need those little wins in order to get those big wins. All right? So I had mentioned this before, but step number five is making a game plan. This is where we get into the planning and process of Whoopi. So I actually kind of skipped over the two O's when I am going through whoopee because now we're in the planning and process phase. However, I will make sure to touch on the two O's, which is something you can do during the planning and process phase or prior to just before the planning and process phase. But first, let's dive into this. So step number five, you got your two goals or your one goal and you know what you want to achieve at the end of the three months. And actually, that is the first O when we're talking about whoopee because that first O is outcome and you need to figure out what is your outcome. So we did that. We're doing that by knowing, okay, what am I going to do? What is my goal by the end of the three months, especially if you do have to break it down into three month increments. Even if you have to break it down, like it's a five-year goal, what is reasonably realistic for one year and then break that one-year goal back down into three months. All right. So you you got the outcome. Now we're going to go into the planning and the process, but I will make sure to touch on the other O at the end. So planning and process. You want to make a game plan. How are you going to tackle this goal? Now we're going to get into my subset of numbers, which is my seven step game plan. Luckily, this is the end of the main numbers of one through five. So you're sitting here, you have these one or two goals, and you're going to make a game plan to attack this goal. The first step is to sit here. Now that you've circled those one or two, find a new piece of paper and go, okay, what knowledge are you lacking that you need answers for in order to make sure that you can start making progress on this goal? So if it's starting a business, maybe you are trying to figure out how to set up email marketing or how to build a blog or build a website, or maybe it's investing and you're trying to figure out, well, I really should get some confidence behind me when it comes to investing and some basic general knowledge so that I can invest confidently without, you know, freaking out. There's so many different things. Maybe you just need a strategy and you don't know of any strategies. So you need to go out 
and find them. So this is the consumption phase. And I want you to make this phase as short as possible, which I'll get to in a second. But what you're going to do is you're going to seek out those answers in a short time frame, consume all the information, and then act on them. So step number one is just know what you're lacking and go find those answers, whether that's via books, blogs, or online courses, or hiring a one-on-one coach. This is how you're going to get those answers and make sure that you can implement them immediately, but also feel confident in your implementation. Step number two in the seven-step process is to set a timeline on this consumption phase and to only consume from one person. This is something I learned from my dear friend, Natalie Bacon. She is the most efficient and effective human being that I have personally had the privilege of meeting and getting to become great friends with. And what she does is she only learns from one person. And I think this is so important because we so often, again, spread ourselves too thin, try to do too many things. And we think that consuming information, like going through a course or reading a book, is so productive, but it's not productive. It is just consumption. So you need to consume in as short amount of time as possible, like listening to this podcast, go out, find that book or find that blog post, read it, know what you have to do close down that phase basically close out the time that you're spending on that phase and then implement so you have to set a time frame on this like if you're going to sign up for a course you're going to finish it in 30 days or you're going to finish it in two weeks no ifs ands or buts about it you're going to find the time you're going to dedicate it and finish it within that restricted time period so that you can move on to taking action because again consuming information although it's great to learn new knowledge and get the tactics and the strategies it's not productive because if you don't do what you're supposed to do with that information, you're never going to get to your goals. So set a timeline on that consumption phrase and really focus on learning from just one teacher so you don't have to spend time deciding, oh, well, which one is right? Which one should I go with? Just find someone that's doing what you want to do, learn what strategies they're using and implement those. And then once you fully implement, if it didn't work for you, That's a great opportunity to learn from that experience and then go out and seek a new teacher. But hopefully, if you do commit to that one teacher and that shortened consumption phase and then taking action, you're going to be very well off. So that leads me into step number three, which is to immediately implement once your consumption phase is over. So you have to shut it down, decide you're not going to read any more blog posts or books or take any more online courses from other people or even from them, but in a different area until you've fully implemented what you have currently learned. Then we get into step number four, which is to create another list. You know, I love my lists. So now you're going to go to a new page in your workbook, but this is going to be a couple days or hours or maybe weeks out, depending on what sort of consumption phase you set for yourself. And you're going to create a massive action list. Actually, you can start doing this as you're learning. That would be a good thing to do while you're going through these blogs or books or courses Create that massive action list. What are the steps you need to take in order to get your goal off the ground? So if it's paying off debt, you need to figure out, well, how much do I have now? What am I putting towards payments right now? What do I have? You know, set yourself a budget. Okay, now what is the extra income you have coming out of your budget that you could put towards your debt? principle on your payments, on your balance. Okay, what if you found some extra income? Where are your opportunities there? How much would that be? There's obviously so many steps you can take towards making sure and making it inevitable that you hit your three-month goal. But you have to make that massive action list. And what one thing is don't worry about, you know, which one you're going to do first or how you need to put this in order, how you need to calendar this out. You'll cover that next. Just while you're learning or immediately upon being done with your consumption phase, make that massive action list of all the things you know you need to do in order to get to that three-month goal. Even if it's, okay, or in order to get to that five-year out goal, and then we can worry about the prioritization in step number five. That's where we're going to prioritize and put in order the actions you need to take. So you have that action list, the massive action list. Now you're going to prioritize it. Which one, which thing are you going to do first and second and third? Which ones are most important for getting going? Which ones are going to be the most 
payoff for the effort that you put in. So again, if it's paying off debt, maybe it's, well, I need to find that extra money in my budget because that's the key thing is being able to pay extra money towards the principal on my debt. So that's number one. And number two is finding the extra income opportunities that then I can find even more money to put towards my debt. If it's building a business, you know, it depends on which business and it depends on how you want to make money. So you really got to hone into what's the biggest bang for my time and energy buck where I am going to make money. It's probably not going to be getting Twitter followers or Instagram followers. It's probably going to be figuring out how you're going to monetize and creating the actual product or creating the actual service and selling it, right? If you're trying to make money, being an entrepreneur or something, you need to make money. It can't just be blogging about your everyday life. Eventually it can be that, but you know, you have to be strategic about the actions that you take. All right, then we go into step number six, which is to schedule these actions. So you're going to open up your planner or your online Google calendar or whatever calendar you use and actually schedule the actions and the results you want from your actions. So it's not just going to be, um, you know, work on debt payoff goal. It's going to be specifically what you need to do that day to get and build progress towards this debt payoff goal. So you're going to actually schedule reconfigure my blog to find extra money for debt or you can obviously shorten that however you want it but you're going to schedule that on a Sunday from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. and you're going to sit down and you'll know when that calendar reminder or you see it on your scheduler pops up you're going to do exactly that you know exactly what you need to do so all of these actions that you're making a big long list for you're going to have to take them and put them into your calendar so you know exactly when you're going to take these actions and when you get reminded for them what exactly you're going to be doing step number seven is to go it's time to implement so you just got to get going get committed and start taking action and I know it can feel and sound easier said than done and oftentimes it is but if you get over that initial hump of facing the damage or facing the reality and now you start setting those goals and then you start making plans you can pick up that momentum just like the snowball method when you're paying off debt you start picking up that snow and building momentum and it becomes easier and easier and easier to attack get after and make progress and achieve your goals so Real quickly, I just want to touch back on the whoopee method. So step number five and then those sub steps, my seven step game plan is really that planning and process, the P in whoopee. And then the last step in the seven step game plan is the E, which is execution. So I have two things to touch on because these are the two main things that when you set SMART goals, don't get covered. And they're really important. The second O in Whoopi stands for obstacles. These are things you know are going to come up or you can just feel it. I mean, we all know what excuses we're going to make for ourselves. So we need to also make a long exhaustive list when this, it'd be good to do this when you make your lifetime's goals list after you go through the prioritization phase or after you pick your one and two goals or just the one goal, I want you to make an exhaustive list for each goal. And this feels redundant, but I promise you it's really important. You need to make a list of all the obstacles you can foresee and all the excuses you feel like you might, you know, end up making. So let's say it is you're, you're trying to pay off debt. Let's say one of your goals is you want to pay off debt and another one is you want to lose some weight. And you can see that an obstacle that might come up and this, you know, you might not even consider this an obstacle or maybe it would be an excuse is your friends are always asking you to go out for drinks on Thursday night or, you know, I have, I used to, when I lived in Chicago, had like a standing meeting with my friends where we would watch The Bachelor every Monday night. And my obstacle would be let's say if I'm trying to lose weight well we stay up too late so then I don't wake up in the morning to get my workout in and then you know the day gets away from me I can't get in in the evening and it all just you know goes to hell so that would be one of my obstacles another one would be well maybe we eat bad food when 
we all get together on Monday night. Maybe I always, you know, forget to prep things. So I always end up going to the grocery store and buying things. So this would be something that would go against both my weight loss goal and my debt reduction goal. Um, Maybe if friends are always asking me to go out on Thursday nights, that's both against your weight loss and your debt reduction goal. And so you just need to figure out, okay, what are all the things that have come up in the past that have kept me from achieving these goals? And what can I foresee? And what excuses have I pretty regularly made for myself and that have gotten me off track in the past? You know what's going to happen. And even if you don't know, you have an idea. And if you can make a list exhaustive enough from what you think might happen, then anything that does come up, any obstacles or excuses that will come up, will pretty closely relate to at least one of these things. So make that exhaustive list and then the I in whoopee, so after the plan and the process, you start with the identification. So before but also after you execute, I want you to re-identify as the person that you've become once you've achieved this goal. What would this person do or not do when they've already achieved this goal? So if you're someone who has paid off a thousand or even four thousand dollars of debt by the end of the year or just a thousand by the end of the three months something has changed in you if you can foresee that if I'm sitting here in January of 2019 I want to pay a thousand extra dollars at the end of March of 2019 I need to do something different so now I embody exactly who that person is. Let's say I've also, you know, lost 10 pounds or whatever. So we can talk about both the debt and the fitness goal. So I'm embodying that person. Now, as I'm in identifying as this person, you there's two exercises here. One, I want you to do daily visualizations, whether that's journaling and you just journal. And, you know, one thing I've been doing is writing 10 of my goals. And they're not really goals, but they're just like, 10 daily affirmations different kind of pertaining to different goals of the type of person I am or what I'm already have already achieved one of my girlfriends sent me a text about this she said just write it as if you've already achieved it so one of mine is I am fluent in Italian and another one is let's see I take August and December the two months off every single year and that could take me years to achieve but I'm writing it as if I already achieved it so that I can really envision and embody exactly how I will be and what I think about when I write that down which by that time I hope you know once I can take August and December off I'll be like oh yeah super easy no big deal so anyway you have to embody and identify with this person that you're going to become because your brain can't decipher between what's real and what you're telling it is real. Your brain just believes the thoughts that you tell you yourself. So you need to identify no, new thoughts about what you think you would do in these certain situations so that and here's the second little exercise when obstacles or excuses that you make come up you no longer identify as the person that makes these excuses for these obstacles. You identify as the person that, well, when I go and get with my friends on Monday night, because that's important to me and it's a priority. So you don't necessarily have to be, I'm not the person that gets together with friends on a Monday night. You can say, when I get together with my friends on a Monday night and we stay up a little later, I am the person who still wakes up for my morning workout to get it done so I know the day doesn't get away from me. I am the person that preps for this day on Sunday. I prep a snack or I purchase something under my budget and under my price range at the grocery store for Monday night so that I don't have to quickly run to the closest. Maybe it's a convenience store that has higher prices or Whole Foods. Those are the two things I used to do. And I'd have to pay like double the price for everything I wanted to bring because I wasn't prepared before. So now you're identifying as the type of person that does these things ahead of time and you'll realize that you'll start to do those things. And if an obstacle comes up, you still stay committed. Specifically, if you are doing these identification exercises, doing those daily affirmations and really identifying your pers- yourself, your person, as that type of person, the one that still holds their commitments to themselves, the one that still, you know, will prep beforehand or will go home even before the night is over so you can ensure that you can wake up the next morning. 
So identification and identifying as that person is really important, but also figuring out what those obstacles and excuses that are inevitably going to come up are going to be, start preparing for them so you can re-identify and make a plan B essentially for these obstacles and excuses. All right. That is pretty much what I have for you guys today. I know this got way longer than I thought it was going to be, but I hope it was jam-packed full of lots of great information for you to start implementing your 2019 goal planning and hopefully take you through the whole process to get you prepared for having successful first three months at achieving a couple of goals that you want to set out for 2019. So I'd love to hear from you first visit the Facebook group. Go to wanderwealthy.com slash FB if you're not in the Facebook group or you can go to Facebook and search for Wealthy Wanderers and get inside. I want you to tell me what you thought of this episode and I want you to tell me what your one or one and two goals are for the first quarter of 2019. And then if you want to start having a conversation about what sort of obstacles you have brainstormed that you might see and or leave your new identity of the type of person you're going to be when these obstacles come up, I invite you to do so. Again, another level of wishing and hoping your dream into existence, your goal into existence, you're 42% more likely to achieve that goal if you just get it down on paper and if you get it down in the Facebook community. So I'd love to see your beautiful face there and let's start a conversation about this. If you want any links. I didn't really mention anything, but I will post some helpful links in the show notes. So go to wanderwealthypodcast.com slash podcast slash episode 87. And you guys, happy 2019. Until I see you in the new year or speak with you in the new year, I hope you wander wealthy.